Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Mark Bell's Power Project Podcast. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by friends over at Free Sleeve. Dude, uh, I used to never, ever, never, ever, forever, never like ice anything down. Like I, you know, everybody knows I got a bad back. Uh, my elbow is always bugging me. I would never do it because it's such a pain in the butt. Like it just, it, it sucks, right? Yeah. Like I, I hate it. Mm -hmm. No, icing usually like I would avoid it too. I knew I'd need to like ice my elbow or ice my knee or ice my back. And I just wouldn't do it because it makes a mess. Mm -hmm. Freaking water drips everywhere. It's yes. hard to set up. Um, ice packs aren't comfortable. Like you can't get the front and the back of your elbow at the same time, which is why the freeze sleeve and the flat pack are so damn good because with the flat pack, you can ice your shoulder, you can drape it over your shoulder, your lower back, different parts of your body. But with the sleeves, you can just pull it out of the freezer, wrap it over your elbows, wrap it around your knees, makes no mess, doesn't leak, walk around the house, do what you got to do, take it off, put it back in the freezer. It is the simplest, easiest, painless process to ice your body. Drop the straps, wraps, and ice packs, and make sure you freeze it, sleeve it, and relieve it. Head over to freesleeve.com right now. Check out the entire variety of different colors, sizes, and again, check out that flat pack. Uh, at checkout, enter promo code POWER25 for 25% off your order and free domestic shipping. Yeah, so I saw a post from The Rock about the uh, Phil Heath uh, documentary and, you know, anything that has to do with lifting or fitness, it's always going to be fun to watch, like kind of like watching the CrossFit Games uh, documentaries. I don't know if you guys have seen any of those, but I'll watch those all day just because there's like there's lifting in there and it's uh, fun to be able to relate to it and to watch these people, you know, go through these agonizing workouts. I think from that standpoint, I think the Phil Heath documentary would be really cool. I, I don't, you know, I have not seen any clips of it or anything, so I don't really know their full intentions, but I believe they're trying to show like his comeback. And if they're going to tell his comeback story, I'd imagine they would talk about his surgery that he had on his stomach. He had like a hernia. Um, and then when he came back, he just wasn't the same and so forth. And then he, uh, he lost one and has been retired since that time for a bit. And uh, now he's making a comeback. And I think if he wins, I think that he either, I can't remember if he beats uh, Lee Haney and uh, I, I want to say Lee Haney and um, Ronnie Coleman are maybe tied with like eight victories or something like that. Maybe, maybe you can look it up or something, but um, I think he'll surpass those guys and get nine. I think originally he wanted to get 10. Uh, but either way, I think it would be interesting. The problem is I, I just don't think they're going to talk about performance-enhancing drugs at all. And uh, I, I hope that they do at least a little bit. I know that once you go down that rabbit hole that it uh, it's really distracting. You know, it throws people way off. But I train really hard every day. I've been training for 30 years. And it's not like <laughs> – it's not like I somehow exponentially train worse than someone like Encima, who is who's natty. Um, it's just that Encima is naturally uh, built that way, along with working really hard and along with figuring out a lot of stuff. And so when it comes to performance enhancing drugs, I think that people, a lot of times they dismiss what somebody does for their work and just says, you know, <laughs> you know, that person to a cheat or whatever. So I do understand that they probably want to not, you know, do stuff like that or film stuff like that because of the um, persona that it has. But why not try to communicate and why not try to just say, look, this is, this is, this is professional bodybuilding. Like this is part of it. Insulin growth hormone. Um, it, it would be a lot to, uh, to undertake, but I don't know how you talk about professional bodybuilding without talking about drugs. Yeah. So Lee Haney has eight and then Phil Heath has seven. So it looks like he would tie the, uh, the mo for the most wins. And Ronnie would be eight too. So they'd all be at eight at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Um, you know, you, you had me when you said that Mark about the PEDs, you had me thinking like the thing is it's when the doc comes out, they're probably not going to talk about it, but you know that YouTube is going to have a field day with it. <laughs> like, that's the thing. They won't talk about it, but they're going to be all these YouTubers that are going to be like, but they didn't talk about drugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, just because it is, you know, The Rock and uh, Seven Bucks Productions and stuff. I mean, are they, do you think they're going to ignore it completely or it would like, I mean, can they, and like, how, how do you think that's going to go? Like, is, yeah, is I don't sort of like, I don't, it, yeah, I don't think that like they, PG or something. You know, I don't know how that shit works, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think that they can. Um, I think it'd be too hard. <clears throat> It'd be too hard to ignore it. Um, but again, I don't, I just don't know how I don't, I, don't, I mean, I know generation iron, <clears throat> they don't talk about it much, um, because they're trying to showcase the bodybuilders, but they at least bring it up a little bit here and there. Um, the Jay Cutler approach to it, you know, people used to ask him, I remember seeing him on like a local news channel one time and he was just, they asked him about it. He's like, he's like, it's, uh, it's it's part of it's part of professional bodybuilding is what he said he just said performance enhancing drugs they asked him if he took them and he said performance enhancing drugs are a big part of professional bodybuilding you could even leave it at that i think you know what i mean you can say hey you know these we're enhanced uh enhanced athletes and we're gonna we have an extra 30 40 i don't know how many pounds on us you know um but if you look at um natural bodybuilding a lot of the guys that are natural, if they were to go on stuff, they would really just be about 20, 30 pounds bigger probably. So, you know, it's Dave Tate used to talk about how you have these cards that you can play at different points in your life. And he's like, if you're, if you're going to start to like lift weights to make your high school football team, but you had to lift weights, like you had to like train for it. Um, that's a card that you can pull out at some, at a particular point. And for some people they might need to pull that card earlier and they might need to really not just work out with the team and lift during the season and all the normal stuff might have to actually train. And there's a lot of people in the off season that are working on getting their 40 down to 4.8 seconds, but there's also people on the team that run a four or five without any, you know, without really much history of, uh, you know, running and stuff like that. So you can pull these different cards at different points in your life, but once you pull out that card to, you know, you can use supplements, you can diet, right? There's a lot of things you can do and they can have a pretty big impact. But once you pull that card for steroids, you only get to pull it once. And it's like you put that card down on the table, you gain your 20, 30, whatever that amount of weight is. And you don't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't like pile up on itself. I think that's what people think. I think that people think, you're going to get a percentage better all the time, but it's no, you just get a percentage better period. And then the goal from there is to try to figure out a way to hold on to that, whether you stay on them forever or cycle through different things or just take more and more, which happens a lot. Um, I guess the, the choice is yours, but without them, you most likely will lose a lot of those uh, gains as well. One thing I'm, I'd be interested to see in the, or like the, if I'm going to see one person off steroids at some point, cause he's going to have to be off it at some point in his life and see what he looks like. It's big Rammy because you're like, Oh yeah, it doesn't just stack and stack big Rammy bro stacks. And stacks. Oh <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think it's stacked and stacked for big Rammy. <laughs> and it just, it, <laughs> oh, so you bring up a good point when you start to bring in the other parts of the performance enhancing drugs, I, which I've never uh, tangled with before, but like growth hormone and insulin and things of that nature, you could be right because insulin will allow you to shuttle in like more carbohydrates and take in more nutrients and stuff. Growth hormone will help you continue to stay lean. So these guys can get pretty, <laughs> pretty damn um, wild. I've seen some YouTube videos before where they show the guys before and after, you know, guys that went through their career. And but like, you know, we, we know that Phil Heath has always looked amazing. You know, Phil yeah. Heath is an exceptional athlete, former basketball player. I, I got nothing but respect for him, nothing but respect for The Rock, nothing but respect for the people that are putting their their money into this. I mean, this is a huge deal to have bodybuilding showcased this way and hope I hope it's a huge success. I just that was the first thing that popped in my head because I see The Rock's Instagram uh turning into like the Oprah Winfrey show, you know, and kind of turning into like a really soft PG version of, uh, of, of where he started. And maybe that's just, maybe that's his new life. Maybe it has to be that way. I have no clue, uh, what it would be like to have 200 million people, uh, waiting every day for you, you to make a post, you know? So he's got a crazy responsibility, but at the same time, if we're being honest and we're being critical, I see him hustling that tequila all the time and he doesn't have a problem with that. So it just brings up some, you know, real interesting stuff, in my opinion. 
Yeah, he has to uh, leave everybody like a, a little feel good story every time they check out his social media. Right. Um, Which is it, dope. Yeah. And it, what's really dope is uh, so like, you know, the new Xbox just came out. So they were showing clips of him introducing the first one. And, you know, he was still like uh, the rock, you know, the wrestler. So he had the hair and he looked, you know, very much old school. I mean, that's how long ago it was. So he re- he teamed up with them again. And he's I-, I can't remember what he even did, but he was giving out a bunch of Xboxes to people or something like that. Raising money. I whatever it is, he's still trying to be a good dude. But what's crazy to me is here we are. I, I don't even know how many years ago Bigger, Stronger, Faster was you know, over a decade, uh, maybe like 15 years at this point now. And it's still, in my opinion, like the, the best, you know, documentary on all this stuff. Um, is it, I mean, I know in, uh, not enhanced athlete, uh, generation iron with enhanced athlete, they did some pretty controversial shit, but it still wasn't as revolutionary as bigger, stronger, faster. Um, do you think it's because it was kind of the first or it's just, it, there hasn't really been anything uh, quite up to par, or quite up to that level, or both. I think bigger, stronger, faster was a family story, and uh, also my brother was like, you know, trying to get other people to talk about it, and no one really talked about it. There wasn't really the only people that would talk about it were people that just didn't have much to lose. Um, it was people that weren't you know, already like famous or wealthy. Um, It was, uh, I mean, me and my brother talked about it, but like we didn't have, I mean, the only thing we had to, well, (laughs) there's there's always a lot to lose. It's, it's illegal, you know? Um, And at that time I didn't have like prescription for it and stuff like that. So uh, there's some dangers to it, but you know, as far as we understood and the information that we had at the time was like, Hey man, let it rip. It's a movie, you know? And that's what we'll be able to say if, anything happens and we're like all right well i'll trust you lawyers and you know we'll see see what happens here but i think what made bigger stronger faster unique is that my brother was trying to get to the bottom of almost more like the reason why uh people use performance enhancing drugs rather than uh bashing performance enhancing drugs it was more like hey let's just see what's up with this oh okay uh, it, everybody wants to be number one and some people don't really mind the cost of it. Whereas these other people over here really do. And then what, what I grew up in powerlifting, um, steroids were never looked down upon ever. Not, not, I mean, they would be looked down upon in a sense that if you competed in a drug tested federation and you were on shit, then we were like, what's this guy? It's like, come on, dude, this guy's a monster. Like what is, what is he doing in this federation? This is ridiculous. So we would look down on it, on, on things like that. But from the time I was young going to local gyms and stuff, I'd hear guys talking about stuff and it wasn't like they were whispering and it wasn't like this weird thing. They were like, Oh yeah, I've been like running some, di-. you know, someone's like, dude, that was a sick deadlift. And somebody's like, yeah, I've been running some Diana ball the last couple of weeks. And somebody else is like, really, how much are you taking? And I'm like, ah, oh, take 50 milligrams a day. I've been doing it for the last, you know, three weeks. And uh, the other guys will be like, where'd you get it from? And so just like <laughs> really just open, just, just, uh, you know, just kind of like letting it go. And, you know, it's part of strength sports, uh, strongman athletes, uh, powerlifters, bodybuilders. I think the thing that's impressive, um, I don't follow bodybuilding, so I don't really know what's going on with bodybuilding, but in powerlifting, there's a lot of guys that are executing really, really well and doing just fine without taking anything. And that fascinates me. Um, and, and maybe they're, you know, I, I can't foresee a scenario where they're all lying you know i know everyone's like oh but that guy's on tons of shit everyone always just kind of says that dismisses it but a lot of these guys have been key and girls have been competing in drug tested federations for a long time and i just i'm not buying that they're all you know on shit so anyway yeah i think bigger stronger faster uh hit the mark because it was uh, the family story tie into the whole thing and my brother was honestly i think just kind of seeking like hey like Who's on this shit? Why won't people talk about it? And why, when somebody gets busted for it, why do they cry? <laughs> you know, they like knew what they were doing. Now they're in court and they're crying all over the place. And uh, yeah, I think he just wanted to try to get to the bottom of uh, people's obsession with being number one, uh, whether it's uh, 
you know, because in a lot of these sports, it is cheating. Like it's, it's, it's in the rule. It's against the rules. So that brings up a lot of other stuff. Uh, but for me, um, I never participated in a sport where what I was doing was illegal. You know, performance enhancing drugs are not necessarily, they're illegal period, but they're not, um, for competition. Um, you could decide to go into a drug tested federation if that's what you wanted to do. And the non drug tested federations aren't called anything. They're just federations, you know? <laughs> yeah. And Seema, do you remember the first time or at least how you came about watching bigger, stronger, faster? It was like in 2013 or 14 that, that I, I got to ST in 2015. So it was 2013 or 14 when I saw it. And I think that like, uh, in the past, I had a much more, I guess, juvenile view on, uh, you know, drug use and, and people who took steroids. I was like, uh, that stuff's stupid. It's evil. It's unhealthy. I was one of those people who were just like, it's just like, you know, I, I, I couldn't wrap my head positively around it just because like, and I think the, do the documentary did a very good job of kind of showing you that it's not like, it's, it has a stigma of being a cheater's thing. And for the longest time, everything that I watched up until that point made me feel like, yeah, guys that are just like kind of feel like they need to cheat do that, right? And after I watched that documentary, I think I was just like, it's not like that. Like, it, 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 it's not really like that. Um, so I think that was the big thing that it kind of it kind of showed me. It didn't, I guess, yeah, I started a, having a much more negative anymore. view. It wasn't a moral, it was exactly, it wasn't a moral thing anymore because before that I had a very moralistic view of, of, of that. And afterwards I, I really did. I think a key factor to keep in mind is, is that they're performance enhancing, you know? So you kind of need to have a little something going on before you can enhance the performance of, of what it is that you have. And if you're enhancing the performance of like a whole lot of nothing, then it might not really result in anything that great. Um, that's and that's why you know i usually i usually tell people not to do it you know i talk people out of it you know, quite a bit and when they actually do decide that they really want to do it i'll push them and say hey you know see what you can do like you know do you really feel that stuck like do you feel like you're going to kind of like look the same for the next five years sort of no matter what you do um then maybe you know you would be better off uh you know looking into that I ran into a guy the other day and he said, um, it just, I was walking to a coffee shop and he's like, it's like, dude, it's like, like, what do you do? I was like, I lift weights, you know, <laughs> he's like, you're huge. And, uh, I was, we got talking and he was like, he's like, what do I need to do? He's like, I'm like six, three, I'm like one ninety. He's like, I'm skinny. He's like, I need to fit. I need to fix this. And I said, you need to eat meat. You know, I didn't start with like the steroid story, you know, like, cause you know, you need to lift, you need to lift weights and you need to replenish your body. You know? So we talked a little bit about, about lifting. Once I knew that he lifted, I was like, I think you need to probably eat a good amount of protein, you know, and just the kind of the whole, you know, nutrition spiel and getting sleep and just, you know, four or five things that he, you know, um, could easily implement. Um, but yeah, you don't start out with, you don't start out with steroids and steroids don't, um, they, they could really help somebody become a champion, especially if they take it over top of somebody else who's not taking it. But again, you got to keep in mind, you know, when they do this like Phil Heath documentary that, you know, it's not outing anybody. Everybody knows this already. All the competitors will be on as much different shit as they can within reason to, and sometimes without reason. Uh, to make themselves look the best they possibly can. And it's no discredit to Phil Heath. He's always looked amazing. Um, and he'll continue to look amazing even when he, you know, finally hangs it up at some point. But I don't know. I think I think it will be fun to watch because there will be a lot of the bodybuilders and stuff and all the people that we've seen over the years. So it should be, uh, it should be at least exciting from that standpoint. Yeah, Real then, quick. Oh. Go ahead. There, I, I think this is another reason why when um, people think about or see steroids, it's it's immediately like, oh, scary. Because like, um, and I, I just like, there, there are two shows that I, I saw recently and there are some episodes where um, 
I think on an episode of this one show, the girl was like, oh, it's like, you know, I think uh, the, he's doing this and it's similar to like when a bodybuilder takes steroids and gets roid rage. And then on another show, a guy got angry in the corner and then one guy was like, huh, roid rage. And I remember so many cartoons as a kid where like there'd be an episode with like this really big, scary, hulking person that they were experimented on with drugs and they got angry. So I think like there is still at least a vast population, the vast part of the population has that thought when they think about steroids, they think about roid rage and anger and rock music. <laughs> yeah, and I can't remember, somebody had pointed it out, it might have been Rogan, but it's like, oh, like, uh, I don't know, like the, the new Xbox is the old Xbox on steroids, or like, you know, the, the new Tesla, whatever model is like a regular car on steroids. It's like, so we still use, you know, that, uh, that term or whatever that, that state, right. we're trying to explain that something is like, significantly better than the other version that's not on steroids <laughs> but when a person's on it we look at it weird <laughs> yeah the steroid topic is a really strange thing because uh there's a lot of things in life that you can pay for and people typically don't have a problem with it you know like i i could uh i could buy a bike from a store that's a hundred bucks, you know, I can go to Target and get a decent bike, right? And I can cruise these mountains here in uh, Bodega, you know, or I can buy a bike that's, uh, you know, 3,500 bucks and propels me up the thing and I can pedal when I feel like pedaling uh, or I can have the engine, you know, kind of take over. Um, there's also so many different things you can do to like, uh, you know, and, and I, I guess on that same topic of, of cycling, like a lot of stuff in cycling is not fair because those bikes are so expensive. And so people that are just starting out, um, they don't have the ability to really kind of quote unquote enhance their performance with their bike because they just can't fucking afford it because the bikes can be so, uh, so expensive. And there's thousands of examples of this. I mean, you start to get into like NASCAR and stuff, which is, you know, um, I, I don't know if it's the sport or not, but you kind of get the idea of like, Hey, the team with the most money is going to win. And you see that in baseball and football. I mean, it just really opens up the door to you starting to go, well, fuck, man, I don't even know if I can define what cheating is, you know? Um, again, I would say if, if somebody, if, uh, if somebody's in a sport and they continue to, you know, lie about it, like Lance Armstrong situation, I think it's pretty clear. You can call it, you can call him a cheater. It doesn't really matter that everybody else is doing it. Um, the rules were set up that they, they were the way they were and you broke them. So I don't know how, like, I don't, we can't like, uh, unring that bell. Like that's a decision that you made. And, uh, I don't know what other term, you know, you would call it. So, but it is, it is just an, uh, the whole topic is really interesting. What if you took something that you didn't know was illegal? Like, uh, you took some type of caffeine product and you just, you just, you legitimately didn't know. Cause there's a lot of weird stuff, uh, on those lists for like track athletes and, and things like that. I mean, it just, now you would be like, well, you know, they didn't know, or it's like a, I don't know, 13 or 14 year old kid who's a swimmer and they took a pre-workout and now they tested positive, but they're trying to go to the, you know, it just, it really gets your mind stirring. You're like, I, I, you're like, I don't know. I don't know what, I guess every case is a little different. Yeah, because I mean, you you could pay to hire a bodybuilding coach, and that's right. You're, you're fine. Um, it's funny though. You brought up baseball because I, I've I've been trying to finish Screwball, which is a really good documentary about you know PEDs and stuff. That movie's hilarious. The the kids threw me off at first, uh, and see whether like they when they redo uh, like they recall some of the stories instead of having like just actors reenact it they make they have kids reenacting it so like you see little a rod you know just like uh in his full yankees outfit tells a guy that knows all the formulas and stuff he's like i want the same thing that manny ramirez got you know after right after manny just got caught so it's pretty funny <laughs> the kids are cute too like they're like adorable <laughs> And they're like, yo, man, I need some growth hormone. I need some insulin. <laughs> like, I need some testosterone. You're like looking at it. You're like, what? This is coming yeah. out of a little kid's mouth? Dude, yeah. So I haven't finished it, but I, I just remember hearing about that one and just wanting to check it out. But it's on Netflix now. I highly recommend it because it's, it's 
very informative. Um, I can't remember where I was going with all that, but I uh, also watched a uh, Moneyball recently, which is the, another movie about baseball, about the Oakland A's, you know, they're, they're, you know, they, they don't, they don't make very much money in Oakland and therefore their team, they're not able to, you know, get a bunch of free agents and stuff. So they're always going up against the Yankees or uh, the, the Red Sox, you know, these super high big market teams and they can't compete. So is it fair that the Yankees can just pay all of the, uh, I, I forgot what they're called, but when you overpay your players, you just pay an extra fine on top of it. Over the salary cap. Yeah. When they're over the cap, they can just be like, man, who cares? And they pay for it and nobody gives a fuck. But <laughs> then, you know, a rod gets caught with steroids and stuff and then everyone freaks out. It's like, well, I mean, wh- where do you draw that line? You know, we, we shit who the hell knows. And then when it comes to Mr. Olympia, um, is it normally in December? I don't know. When it- no, it's normally much earlier. It's normally like in September. Um, but if you go back to bigger, stronger, faster, I mean, there's, uh, you know, Tiger Woods getting 2020 vision, you know, like there's, it's like, dude, that's not, that is, I mean, that's, that is not natural <laughs> at all. Right, right. I mean, he still has to, you know, swing the club a certain way and there's still a lot of work uh, that goes into the whole thing, but just because it's not illegal, uh, then they allow you to do it. You know, years ago in swimming, they, um, they, I don't man, I don't know how they figured this one out, but they made some swimsuits uh that were like 1500 bucks or something like that and you know a lot of times swimmers just wear like a speedo they wear as little as possible pretty much and they shave and they try to have Mm -hmm. as little uh as little friction as as they possibly can and they swim as fast as they can that way but i think speedo the company i think made uh they somehow made something that had less friction less resistance in the water maybe it, it may have been a little buoyant but all the records started to get smashed and right away they were like, you know, like <laughs> we want you to swim as fast as you possibly can, but we didn't mean like that, you know? So it's just, I guess sometimes you want to bring in some rules. Like we all love UFC. I love watching good competition, but I don't really, I don't want, I don't want to see anybody like really get hurt. You know, I, I definitely, definitely don't wish to see anybody get pounded down after they've already been knocked out. You know, it's like you see an extra shot. It's like, that's plenty. Like, I didn't even really need to see that one, but you need some sort you can't have the guy, you know, get knocked out and kicked in the head 10 times. Like it just, it turns into something, uh, turns into something completely different. So I thought that was interesting in swimming where they were like, Oh, like that's, it's just going to change the sport too much. And they had the insight to, uh, to pull it away. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. Kind of the same thing with football, right? Like, um, we, we, everyone gets so pumped to see a, a big old hit, you know, like uh, the Niners play the saints last week and um, names escaping me, but uh, one of our linebackers just fucking crushed Drew Brees. He, Oh my God. Oh, I saw, yeah, I saw that hit dude. And it's always those hits that they'll, they're just always going to throw a flag. Now it doesn't matter what happens. Like <laughs> you can't hit that hard, but they want you to right. hit hard, but not that hard. Um, so as, as like frustrated as I was, I'm like, Ooh, breezy is still on the ground. Like, ooh, like <laughs> I, I don't like that. And he has like eleven fractures on one side, and no. three on another, and it's like, dude, that that kills me because he's a great quarterback. I don't. It's want like to kidneys hurt. were messed up or something from that yeah. hit, right? He got rocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, he got. He just got completely worked. Yeah, so that's another you know thing we want to see the biggest, baddest, but like you know people will, will kind of. In football, they'll kind of turn this way if they're going to be over here right. doing something. But we also still don't want to see anybody get hurt. It's just, you know, that just, like I said, it just freaking sucks. Like, I, I hate that Drew Brees is not playing for the next couple of weeks. What I do hope uh, from this bodybuilding documentary that uh, The Rock is doing, um, Seven Bucks Production is doing uh, on Phil Heath, is I, I really hope that they, hope they do a good job explaining bodybuilding, you know, and, and give a little bit of the, like it doesn't have to get too crazy into the science of it and stuff, but um, just really talk about the the challenges of building muscle. You know, it's a it's it's a, it's not that easy. And bodybuilders are actually, I think bodybuilders are actually brilliant. You know, like uh, training with somebody like O'Hearn and kind of seeing how he um, he's a master. Like like O'Hearn's like a sensei. You know, you're like damn man like this guy this guy knows like he knows some unconventional stuff 
it appears that he knows stuff that like shouldn't work, but it works great. And he's got his own touch on it. And like, he has just a, like a feel for it. And so I hope in this documentary, I hope they uh, show some of that, like, Oh, Phil's got to bring up his shoulders and it's been a week, not that his shoulders are a weakness, but he's got to work on his shoulders to bring them up this year. Like this, this was a weakness last time or the size of his uh, stomach was an issue because he had a hernia. And so he has to work hard to, to do this and show all the bullshit that he's got to go through for that. And, and uh, hopefully they show the, the dieting and the, you know, really dwindling down to the calories and all that stuff. Yeah. She I, really, I was going to say, I, I sincerely hope that they do show all the hard work because there is that perspective on bodybuilders and the general population that they're, they're stupid. Uh, they just lift weights. Like there was a planet fitness commercial where like they show this jacked dude and he's fucking huge. And they're like, Oh, I don't know. Like, what do you do? I lift weights. And they're like, oh, okay, the weights are over here. I lift weights. Like, that's all he kept saying. And then they, like, put him in this room, and that room ended up being the back door. And, like, they, they threw him out of the gym because they're like, oh, we don't have that type of egotistical lifting here. And I'm just like, dude, that's, that's the most jacked guy in the gym. You need him to, like, run this shit. It does, and then the uh, like Taco Bell had the um, the like the protein commercial. Like they had like a I don't know like a burrito that had like double protein. It was just a bunch. Of, yeah, and it was just a bunch of bodybuilders drinking protein shakes. It's like, oh, I love protein. He's like protein, and it just like there's like six of them just all like protein, protein. I was like, you guys don't get it. Like they're kind of sounds like us though, to be honest. Like yeah, but the amount but, that we talk about protein, I mean that is, but, that is an accurate depiction. Yeah, but then at the, at the same time, it's like, hey, this is Taco Bell. Like, again, you should be listening to these guys because they're in great shape. So I hope because it is seven bucks and it's the rock that, you know, your, your everyday, you know, person was like, oh, the rock put this. I want to watch the rocks, you know, seven bucks production video. Like, let's check this out. And then hopefully they can shine some light on like, oh, wait, these guys are smart. They do work their ass off and it's not just steroids. Hopefully, don't cut out our boy Honey Rombot. Hopefully, he's in there. That'd be sick. No, I think definitely the the Rock's gonna have a big effect because the Rock's behind it, and who know if he does make a cameo in it, he'll probably post it on his Instagram. I think it's gonna get a whole kind of a big chunk of a new generation of individuals into the gym after seeing it. I really do because yeah, I wonder he's if behind it. Be it. A, I wonder if it could be a second coming of like pumping iron. I think pumping iron really had a huge impact. Maybe not even so much at the time, but like years later, it had a huge impact. Mm -hmm. that, that could be really cool. So the yeah. rock bought Olympia or how does that even work? He did a while back, but then I think he sold it already. I think he, um, yeah, I don't know the exact story, but somebody else that owns a bunch of other bodybuilding shows, uh, I think, bought it but he might still have the rights to some of it yeah it, that's that was one of the weird things in the post where it was like he kind of made it seem like he already had it's them. already like in the bag you know which is probably just him being excited about it but we don't have any idea who's going to win you know um and hopefully uh the other athletes get a fair shot i think i think there'll probably be some controversy surrounding it already um mm -hmm. And that's part of being one of the greatest of all time. That's part of being Phil Heath. Like he's always going to have, uh, there's always, always going to have like negativity surrounding him. He's always going to have, you know, some of these things, uh, you know, surface. Uh, I think they, they felt like Arnold was given his last Olympia uh, that he did. And if you go back and see any pictures or videos of that, you're like, mm, it didn't really look like he won. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but, he, you know, look, he earned, like he, he made bodybuilding, like fucking give him a goddamn trophy. And <laughs> it's his last year. Like just send him off with it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think it's, I think sometimes it's okay, you know, and, and the, uh, the champ, you got to really dethrone the champ, you know, you got to clearly like whoop his ass. Otherwise you may as well just give it to the champ, you know? Yeah. You see that in fighting all the time. Like, did he do enough to dethrone the champ? It's like, oh, right. I don't know. Right. You know, who knows? But yeah. Well, the Which Tyson guys, fights this weekend. Yeah, this right. This weekend. Yeah. yeah. Sick. What, what's right. going to happen in this fight? <laughs> I, I, I really feel that Tyson's going Tyson's gonna, to uh, whoop Jones' ass. But, like, my buddy's like, when you watch old Roy Jones highlights, you're like, oh, God, this could be pretty scary. Like, 
Roy Jones could come off with this. Yeah, but they, they say the first thing to go is the speed. You know, the power will still be there, but can yeah. can Roy Jones still keep up like speed wise? And then at the same time, I mean, Mike Tyson just looks so strong, like still, you know, like he's he looks really scary. strong, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he looks he's terrifying still. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty stuck. Oh, he's got that me. punching power that I can't talk about that didn't seem to mention to me before. <laughs> What's that? I don't I, remember. No, no, we, we can't. <laughs> okay. we, yeah. But yeah, just I mean, when Tyson hits something, I mean, it looks like he's like punching a hole into something, you know, like, and he's like punching through shit. Um, Roy Jones was known for being fast, and he was known for being quick, but he also reminds me of Mayweather, uh, where he's just kind of unconventional, and he gets weird angles. He somehow escapes getting hit really well. Um, so I think that he'll frustrate Tyson for a while. And I think it will just come down to like Tyson's conditioning. Like if he's conditioned, I think he'll, he'll probably win pretty easily. Um, I think he'll, because I, I, I don't, I can't, I can't see, I can't see Roy Jones being able to really hurt Tyson if Tyson moves his head like he used to. Um, and Roy Jones was never a heavyweight fighter. So, mm-hmm. I mean, he has he has competed against heavyweights before, but he didn't really – I don't even think he weighed – maybe he weighed 200 pounds for the fight or whatever, but he's not traditionally a heavyweight, you know. Um, so I, can, I could see it I, – I hope it's – you know, I hope someone gets knocked out, you know, or <laughs> knocked down at least, you know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. I don't know, I just don't want to see it, like, go the distance out and have people – be like i don't have to be controversial but exciting though it's just exciting to see you know tyson doing his thing again yeah are they are they doing it at a certain weight or is it just like come in with what you got yeah i don't know what they you know i'm sure they discuss something so that they're not too far apart in weight but roy jones has probably got tyson by an inch or two Tyson isn't isn't that short. I think everybody thinks he's super short, but he's like 5'10", 5'11". Really? He's just compact as fuck. And then the guys he used to fight were huge. They were like 6'3", 6'4". I mean, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. What you guys got going on for, uh, like, holidays um, from, a, from a training perspective, from a food perspective? Like, you're going to try to, you know, keep things on point to a certain day and then let shit go for a day or what, what do you guys got planned? You got anything in mind yet? As far as training is concerned, um, still going to be training, still going to be like doing jujitsu up until Thanksgiving, maybe even on Thanksgiving. I think there's going to be like an open mat. Um, but, and every single Thanksgiving year since I like picked up, uh, I, I guess since I picked up fasting, Thanksgiving's just kind of been a non-factor just because like I'll fast during the day. And when I have that Thanksgiving meal, like, you know, when you break a fast, you can't eat that much food, really. Like, you can eat a decent amount, but you can't really gorge yourself. Like, you get, you feel full pretty quickly. And then I'm satisfied. Like, it doesn't even end up being a crazy amount. I mean, I'm not trying to hold back either. So I guess that's just been, that's been my saving grace these days when it comes to holidays or big event meals. Makes a difference. Just a pretty good fast. Like, uh, how long? Uh, it, I think last Thanksgiving, I don't know if I fasted from the night before. No, I think I just fasted the day and then ate in the evening. Mm-hmm. So that, like, that's that's all it is. I just don't eat during the day, like I usually do. Drink some coffee, eat the Thanksgiving meal. But the thing is, is like I get so full so fast because I wasn't eating all day already that I just can't gorge myself. My suggestion on top of that, which I think that's a great suggestion, um, is to. Um, eat protein first in your meal. So, you know, you get your turkey or whatever the heck it is that you get. And uh, maybe it might be kind of painful to just eat the uh, protein by itself for a bit, but try to get in like four to six ounces of it, you know, or maybe even a little bit more if you're a bigger person, but get that in. That's going to automatically force you just to eat a little bit less. You can still enjoy all your favorite stuff. You can still have at it. I think this time of year is kind of some decision-making time. but I think the worst decision you can make is to throw away a lot of the stuff that you've been working for. And I know a lot of people have been working really hard. We get messages all the time about people losing weight and getting in better shape. Um, another thing you can do is just try to do a little bit of like an eye for an eye type stuff. If you're 
like don't let the whole holiday uh, like because the holiday you know thanksgiving is basically one day right but there's other days surrounding it and so you know if you have five cookies after dinner with some ice cream or something like that just say you know what tomorrow i'm going to go on a walk and i'm going to walk for like an hour you know you're not trying to really like make up for it necessarily you don't need to I would, ne- I would never recommend like punishing yourself because you ate a certain way. I don't think that's a good habit, but uh, just being mindful of it. And, and even saying, you know, the next day after you had the cookies, you know, I had cookies yesterday. I'm not going to have any ice cream today. Just little, just little stuff. You can still have it. You can still enjoy it. Uh, just maybe try not to throw everything away. Yeah. And I would say like, so for, for me, if I say, you know, like, oh, I'm going to have, you know, this uh, pecan pie or whatever, you know, somebody brings that over like, no, tomorrow morning, I'll just do a little extra time, you know, cardio or whatever, just because of, you know, like I'll make excuses or whatever. Like I won't actually do it. So for, for me, I have to do it prior to, you know, like, Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to do a little bit extra and, you know, cause I'm probably, I'm going to enjoy, you know, whatever it is, the slice of pie, these cookies. Um, and then what happens is by the time you get to those cookies, they taste so much better because you're like, yep, I, I, I earned this freaking meal right here, this dessert. And then you don't have to like, uh, you're not in debt. If, if, you know, if we put it that way, you know, you're not like, ah, oh, tomorrow morning I have to do this. And then if you miss it for whatever reason, then you feel twice as bad. Um, so for me, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to probably just get some more cardio in, um, like leading up to, uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Start now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, start in advance. Yeah. We started this podcast early, so I'm actually going to, once we shut this down, I'm actually going to do cardio (laughs) because I I like what you're saying because I like what you're saying because if you do 10 minutes, um, if you do 10 minutes of cardio before a lifting session or after a lifting session, like let's just say that you make an agreement with yourself right now that you're going to do that. Um, each time you go to the gym, you do 10 minutes of cardio. By the time six days passes, you did an hour of cardio, which isn't like a, a lot you know, over the course of six days, but it is an hour. And then, you know, the day of Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving, if you do get an extra walk or something, it's kind of more just a bonus um, I do think it's good, like out here in Bodega, um, we see tons of families outside walking. And I realize that in other parts of the country, uh, it'd be much more difficult. But, you know, don't be afraid to get weird and throw on some layers of clothes and go for a fucking walk in the snow. But it, try to encourage other people to go with you. Like make, like make it like a thing. Make it like fun, you know. And you don't have to be outside forever. Just... Uh, you know, just try to get a, a little bit in. A little bit can go a long way. Uh, for myself, recently, <clears throat> I just started to implement a little bit of cardio. Uh, birthday number 44 is coming up on December 10th. And Phil Heath is actually somebody that inspired me, got me fired up to start to work on getting in better shape again. Um, not that I was in bad shape, but I was like, oh, I can kick it up a notch. And uh, when he announced that he was doing the uh, Mr. Olympia, I was like, shit, I'm going to kind of work on some of that uh, as well. Like, I'm not going to like pretend I'm doing the Olympia necessarily. I'm not going to take it that far, uh, but I'm going to push a little harder than normal. And so I started to get in better shape a few weeks ago. I really took my time with it. It was still, the diet wasn't a hundred percent. It was probably more like uh, 80%. And uh, then I just been kind of tweaking it, added in a little bit of cardio, but the first day I did cardio, I just said, all right, do 10 minutes of cardio, you, you lazy bastard. And I didn't even want to do 10 minutes just because I haven't done it in so long. I'm like, I don't, you know, I'm getting on a Stairmaster or whatever. I'm like, I don't feel like doing, I don't want to do 10 minutes of cardio. I'm like, I'm already lean. I'm already in good shape. I'm making all these excuses. I'm like, you should just go home. So I was like, all right, how about like, just go on there for like three minutes, you know? And this is from James Clear, uh, the author of uh, Atomic Habits. He said, uh, make what you're about to do so simple that it's almost impossible to say no to. So if you're like, dude, just do a fucking (laughs) push-up, you know? It's like, it's pretty hard to talk yourself out of, you know, doing one push-up or or doing uh, one set of bodyweight squats for 20 reps or something like that. I mean, it's just, it's it's too easy. It kind of makes you feel like a pussy. You're like, oh, come, you know, 
you're disappointed in yourself before you even try it. If, if you're saying no to uh, doing cardio for three minutes. And so I was like, just do three minutes. I got on there and of course I'm not going to do three minutes. So I did six minutes and then I, and then I left. That was it. I was like, that's good. You know, that's a good start. Next day I came back and I did seven minutes before the workout. The problem is that the six minutes that I did, I did it after the workout. So that's really why I didn't want to do it. But the next time I came in, I did seven minutes before the workout, seven minutes after the workout. And the next time I came in, I did 10 minutes before the workout, 10 minutes after, and so forth. And then I did 20 minutes straight the other day, and then I did 30 minutes. So here we are, you know, uh, five, six days later, I've now strung together doing five and five or six days in a row of uh, some cardio training. So you can suck today and not be doing shit. And within four or five days, you could have strung together a streak of uh, nearly a whole entire week's worth of doing something consistently. It could change that quickly. Can you guys talk about like uh, maybe the, uh, the the mindset when it comes to, um, you know, so gyms are closing down, if not already, wherever everyone is. But also, even just in general, like, um, you know, like my wife is off this week. Jasmine, my daughter's off this week. Um, I'll probably be working from home for a majority of the week. Therefore, you know, getting access to a gym, it, although I, you know, yeah, I have stuff here, but I'm just like, I'm around my family. Like, I'm probably not going to really want to necessarily go all out and, you know, get a crazy gym session in. But, you know, like, I can still do something. But I'll, I know some people will see that at, at, uh, in their um, situation and just kind of feel like, oh man, I didn't get in like a super hardcore workout. Uh, you know, what's the point? Or like, I'm really falling behind, but really they're, they're not. So can you guys kind of shed some light on, you know, not necessarily being okay with a mediocre workout, but still just doing what you can right now? Well, I mean, what's the alternative? I think that, that that's kind of the way I think about it. Um, in, in these situations, it's like, well, you, I have a kettlebell and I have an ab roller. Um, I can either figure out a, a little workout to make me sweat and work my muscles with this. And I have a slingshot so I can do some like push up stuff or I do nothing and I don't, get any type of workout in and I feel even worse because I'm not working on my body. So like, which one's better, <laughs> right? Like, do you have any other options really? Right. I mean, if there are other options, you can let me know, but there might be something that I'm missing, but it really does seem like you just gotta, you, you gotta work with what you got and you absolutely can work with what you got. You just have to make the decision to do it. Yeah, there's a there's a book that I uh, that I think my dad or my brother got me a while back and they just got it for me because of the it has a weird title and it says like eat bacon don't jog is like the name of the book oh, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. and I kind of modeled the war on carbs after it because I thought like wow what a great book it's like a it's like a pamphlet almost you know um, and in the book the guy talks about how people they just make way too many boundaries. They make too many uh, barriers. They have too many barriers of entry when it comes to exercise. And he said, I think that it would be really helpful for people to stop thinking about working out and to just start thinking about exercise, just movement of the body. And it's, it's a lot easier to talk yourself into moving your body around. Um, ah, shit. I got that kettlebell, you know, downstairs, um, uh, I just gonna I'm I'm gonna set a time on my phone for 10 minutes and I remember three or four exercises that I can do with that kettlebell and I'm just gonna do them. I'm gonna go back and forth between each exercise, do a couple reps and keep alternating. And when the 10 minutes is up, uh that'll be my workout. But a lot of times you guys see me work out in like a polo or in like uh like golf shorts or whatever, and I'm not really like in like workout stuff. And I got that from that book. The book was like, you don't need, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Like, just shut the fuck up and go lift. You know, like, just just go get it done. Don't make it any worse than it has to be. And I've been lifting for 30 years. So, yeah, I'm like, I don't feel like fucking changing right now. Like, mm -hmm. any shift in momentum is going to throw me off. So, sometimes that's why I won't eat. You know, like, uh, we'll do a podcast. We'll have a full day of work. And I'm pretty used to fasting and stuff at this point anyway. But I'm like, I'm like, if I eat, I won't lift because I'm going to eat 
and then I'm going to feel kind of full and then I'm going to feel kind of lazy and complacent and then I'm going to want to go home. So I'll just lift hungry. And then what it also does is it sets parameters for the workout because I work out way too much, way too long anyway. So then when I work out when I'm hungry, I'm like, I need to fuck out of here and eat something. So um, anyway, I just think that try not to look at your, your workouts don't have to be epic. You know, you don't always need to, uh, you know, squat five plates or you don't always need to leg press eight plates or, you know, bench heavy weights for it to be considered a workout um, or for it to be considered exercise rather. So really, I think for most people, it's just a matter of uh, just staying really, really active. And, you know, we've talked before on this podcast about um, like non-exercise induced uh activity, you know, like NEAT or whatever it's called. I don't, I don't remember the acronym a hundred percent, but uh, that's just movement that is that you do with your hands and, and so on, you know, but like, I think that you should try to add to that. And when you feel like when you feel good and you don't do too much and you also get enough rest, you have proper nutrition, you feel like moving all the time. And that's why we'll sometimes hear these stories uh, you know, somebody like my mother who just kind of like ended up sitting around uh, for the last couple of years of her life and it's sad. And you're like, I don't understand. Why can't this person, why won't they, don't they understand how good it feels to get outside and go for a walk? And that person's like, you don't have any idea how much pain I'm in. The last thing I want to do is even stand up. And, and so that's why the dialogue is so different from one uh, person to another is because the person that's not moving, they don't want to move. And they also have kind of shut off that side of their brain that tells them that it's okay for them to move because they think that, you know, the, the pain of it is uh, foreign. The activity is foreign. The activity, you know, might be even kind of intense for them at that point. And that's why I, I say the do more, be more stuff. Cause I've learned from myself, the more that I do, the more that I want to do. Um, when I've been here in Bodega, I've been walking like seven or eight miles every day. Um, Part of that is because I don't have a job and so I can, I have the luxury to kind of do that kind of stuff, but, uh, I just love it. Once I get moving, I just want to keep moving and I want to keep training and keep doing stuff. Yeah. I've always really appreciated how you say to lower the barrier of entry, you know, when it comes to, you know, just exercising, um, you know, you, I've been that person where it's like, okay, I'm going to start on, on Monday because that's when everyone else starts and I got to go buy these gym clothes. I got to go buy the gym shoes. Um, you know, that, that sort of thing. I have to have the pre-workout that makes my stomach hurt, but now I got to do it because that's what you're supposed to do. And now it's like, you know, yeah, like I said, I'll see you go from podcast and office attire to full on, you know, gym workout. And it's, it's been, it's been really, um, you know, enlightening to just be like, no, like, yeah, like right now I'm thinking I'll, I'll do like, I don't know, like 10 burpees every minute on the minute. It's like, I could do 10 burpees like that ain't shit. Like that's easy. And then, you know, you do it for like, you know, whatever, like 10 rounds. It's like, I did a hundred burpees and I'm pretty gassed, but I like, that was, that was fun. You know, it was almost, you know, like a, a fun little challenge. And it's like, next time can I maybe do 15? I don't know. We'll see what happens. But whatever, I'm out of here. I'm going to go work on something else. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want, to, I want to rewind real quick to, to what you said in terms of the nutrition on Thanksgiving and eating protein first, like eating some turkey. Um, I think Andrew's probably already even going to do this. Uh, cook us some steak. Like, like you, you, like I, because when you said eat turkey, I'm like, I fucking hate Thanksgiving turkey. I hate turkey. <laughs> uh, I thinking sorry. That <laughs> Yeah, I know. So I, like, I, I legit hate Thanksgiving turkey. It doesn't taste good. It's not something that I want to indulge in. You never on. had my turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never, and everyone says that, but I've never had it. Like I've always said, oh, this is great turkey. But at the same time, it's great turkey for being turkey, which isn't great. So with that being said, like you can, if you want to cook up some Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving steak for people, and you can be the person that kind of indulges on that. And other people can too, if you want to share. But if not, 
have some steak before Thanksgiving. That's definitely what I'm going to do because I like steak, <laughs> right? And I think, d- did, did you guys get that roast from yep. Piedmontese? Yep. I don't even know how to cook that thing, but I'm kind of excited to figure it out. Don't throw it in your slow cooker. They'll be mad at you forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got pretty pissed at me. I got like a standing rib roast or something, and they're that's, like, that's like a $200 yeah. steak. Yeah, that's the one. Um, so we're actually going to have two Thanksgivings. Um, you know, we share custody. Damn. So I'm, we're having one either before or after. I'm not sure, but it's just going to be the three of us. And yeah, I'm throwing that in my, my pit boss smoker. Um, it's going to, it's going to light everyone's face. Off. Like, it's going to be so good. Awesome. Like I, I'm going to, I'm so pumped for that w- way more excited than, you know, actual like Turkey. But to, to me, it's still, you know, it wasn't like life altering, but everyone keeps asking for uh, the turkey that I'm going to cook because last year, same thing, pit boss smoker. And I, I smoked a gigantic turkey. This year is going to be a lot smaller now that I understand what the hell I'm doing. The burnt turkey smoker. that you posted a picture of. <laughs> yep. That's the one. <laughs> it was just the smoker. skin. It was just the skin. All right? I remember you're like, it's smoked. It's, and everyone's like, it's burnt. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was so like, ah, you messed up. Like, no, it was. Everyone was so mad at you. It's like my eggs that I cooked that one time. Everyone's yeah. like, those eggs are burnt. I'm like, it's fucking cheese. I'm like, I know how to cook <laughs> eggs. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll be, I'll be smoking a turkey again this year. Um, but yeah, no, I'm so pumped for that that rib roast. That's oh my god, it's gonna be so good. Yeah. What are some uh, things that people shouldn't do? You know, like it's the the things that people you know uh, the things that people uh, you know should be doing, or the recommendations that we gave. We talked a little bit about fasting, um, but I think there's a lot of things that you can. I think you need to try to set up some boundaries. So I think fasting is a good idea, and maybe maybe even going as far as like writing it down a time that you fast until, you know, Oh, I'm going to be at this person's house at two o'clock. So I'm going to just fast until like three. And then maybe that prevents you from eating the chips and things like that. My suggestion would be, and something I struggle with, and you guys probably struggle with this too, even though uh, we all do pretty damn good on our nutrition. We all do pretty, you know, but if I, if there's like cheese and meat and like, I just end up just, I just, I, I think that a lot of times that stuff is a little bit of a waste. Um, there's nothing wrong with eating meat and cheese. Like it's great. You're getting some protein in and stuff like that, but you know, you're going to be picking out some crackers and some chips and some just bullshit that you probably just, it's probably not normally part of your diet. It probably doesn't taste good enough for it to, for you to even go for it. So one of the things that I would say, uh, to try not to get caught up in uh, in the holidays is just eating extra stuff that you don't need. You're about to have a big meal, and why not double down that big meal and have a good time with that? Yeah, um, I'll just I think it's pretty low hanging fruit because it's what you were just talking about. Um, for me, I, I like to track things. Um, I I track in advance so that way it gets rid of the the uncertainty of the day. So what you said about like writing down when you're going to fast, um, just simply have, have a plan, have something. Um, if you're listening to this show right now, then you obviously care enough about your, your health and fitness to, you know, kind of have this on your mind. So instead of kind of, um, anxiety is not the right word. Cause I don't think, you know, you can, it, that's a little bit much for what we're talking about, but I guess having some worry about like, Oh man, I don't want to, wake up, you know, on black Friday and, you know, be like, Oh, I, I, I messed up. So have a plan going in because if you don't plan, you plan to fail, you know, you guys know that term. That's why I said it was low hanging fruit. Cause this is something that, you know, you should know already, but yeah, like write either write it down or maybe tell your significant other like, Hey, I don't want to be a glutton, you know, like let's, uh, this is what I'm going to do. That's a great tip right there. So don't get frustrated when I'm not taste testing all you know that your delicious food it's just because i'm gonna fast from x um, x hour to x hour and then after that like yeah i'm gonna i'll go all in i can't wait to you know try everything that you made i really 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 like that partner thing that you just mentioned andrew like i'm just imagining you know if you're a you know boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife going into a thanksgiving Right. And, uh, you know, you tell each other, all right, you know, I don't want to do this. So just watch me because I very well might go back on my word. And if they see you, they can just be like, ah, 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 you know what you just said this morning. 
put that down. You know, I feel like it, that's actually a great idea if you can have a Thanksgiving accountability partner. <laughs> yeah, it might be a fun game. You know, they might like uh, call you on your, your BS if you're just like, hey, like, please do this. And then, you know, you are reaching for, you know, the, whatever, like, you know, cookie, glass of wine, whatever. Like, ah, I caught you. You know, make a game out of it. Yeah, and maybe you can share something instead of uh, just, you know, overindulging and, you know, smashing smashing the whole thing. I think, you know, with a with a partner or or with a relative or something, I think you could have a, like a shared sense of purpose going in and you can like I, I used to like when I was fat, I had to like game plan. I had to like I had to visualize. I'm like, okay, this is what it's going to look like when I go to this person's house because I was there last year and I was there the year before and I was there the year before and this is going to be like the setup and this is all the shit that I need to avoid. You know, I would go in there with like a literal uh, like strategic game plan of like how I was going to handle the day. And then I remember the foods that they put out and I was like, well, you know, the foods are probably going to be the same. I mean, it's fucking Thanksgiving. You're going to have all the, you know, all the similar stuff. And it's like, well, what are foods that are more reasonable for me to eat? Um, and I wasn't always super strict, but I tried to make the best decisions I could. And, you know, me being like a low carb proponent, sometimes it was just simply that I just didn't eat that many carbs. Like I just, you know, I'd make that, um, I hate using the word sacrifice because it just sounds like too severe, but I would make that sacrifice to, uh, you know, to commit myself to just saying, hey, just eat lower carbs, eat all the vegetables that you want. You know, those are kind of a freebie and, uh, you know, just eat a ton of meat. And at a lot of these gatherings, you'll find that actually is really easy at a barbecue, um, at Christmas, you know, if you have a Christmas dinner at Thanksgiving, a lot of these like family functions, I mean, most of them, unless you're out of your mind and you're a vegan, <laughs> then uh, most of these things are really centered around meat. And so there's, there's almost always uh, plenty of it and there's, it's almost always a, a good option. And then if you still wanted to go off, off plan a bit, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think it's the end of the world, but sometimes for some people, for me at that point in my life, that would just lead to a, a downward spiral of me, you know, wanting to eat more junk or even stopping at like gas station or something like that and uh, loading up on a bunch of uh, a bunch of junk later on. You know, honestly, I was laughing so much when you said that, that like, you, you know, having a game plan because I just pictured and, and visualizing because I just pictured like visualizing Thanksgiving or you visualizing Thanksgiving. There's rock music playing. You're walking through the house. You're seeing all the food. You're dodging here, dodging here, grabbing meat, putting it on the plate, going to town. It's just like all, it's just so serious. It's just like I'm getting ready for like a big bench. Exactly. Oh man. But yeah, no, you, you got to go in with the game plan. And if you visualize it, shoot, that actually, that's, that's real, man. Like as I, I guess as a, you know, as wild as it may seem, like if you visualize Thanksgiving Day, that'll probably help you out in terms of your decision making on that day, most definitely. It's, well, it's what I had to do. You know, I was really heavy, you know, and I think there's probably a lot of people that listen to the show, they're probably in a similar boat. And if you, if you're, you know, if you're not really prepared for it, it's going to be tough. You're going to find yourself succumbing to the same things that you always do. But in this scenario, this is something that you've done a bunch of times before. You've already gone through this already. So you can almost kind of walk, your th walk yourself through that simulation and say like, no, this ain't happening this way again. You know, it'd be like in jujitsu, like somebody gets you in a certain hold. You can be like, I remember this dude. Like this guy, <laughs> this guy is sick with this like one move, but it's all he's got. He will never get me in that shit again. And you kind of visualize how you ended up in that position and say like, I'm just not doing it again. And I think in this case, you can apply uh, something similar. And this is probably more for people that are, that really struggle with uh, their food choices and food decisions, but it's something that helped me a lot. So give it a shot. Yeah. It just, when you're talking about the, uh, the, the Rocky scenario um, for the 50% of people that don't know what a rogue like video game is, it's uh, basically like uh, you get touched once and the whole game is over. I don't know. Like, Kind of, kind of like that, you know, where like, oh no, I, I can't get, I can't get hit by the cookies. I can't get hit by like, ah, 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 ah. And then you like, okay, just a little something. Game's over. 
I love that. I love that analogy, man. That's fucking great. Yeah, and, so and don't be afraid to punch motherfuckers in the face when they're like, but you love cookies. <laughs> oh, my, you yeah. always eat these. You always eat tons of these. How come you're not eating them this year? Are you on a diet? What are you doing? So so despite and what... Sammy, you're too skinny. Yeah, what the, what the governor is saying, uh, we're, we're probably all going to see family, a good amount of family. And, you know, yeah, people are going to hear that a lot. Uh, what's some advice that you guys have for, you know, some, some people listening right now that are going to see their their uh i don't know whoever someone in their family that's gonna basically kind of talk shit that they're like oh really like you're still on a diet like you know whatever it is um how can they handle that i think you might just need to just kind of tell them straight up you know might need to say hey you know what i'm i'm trying to make some changes i've this is something i always really struggled with and i've kind of uh made a promise to myself a couple weeks back and it doesn't matter to me if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year's I'm or my birthday. I'm going to always try to do the best I can to manage my calories and to manage my weight. And so, uh, shit, man, it'd be cool if you could support me in it. Like, if you see me, you know, going off kilter, like, and you're like, yo, like, I thought you said, <laughs> I thought you said you were doing something. You know, I think a lot of times people, like, they will give you shit, but usually – most cases when they realize that you're pretty serious about something, they'll just be like, that's fucking cool, man. Like they'll usually just support it. I mean, let's face it. We all have family members that can do a lot better with their nutrition and how pumped I I know that we're on the other side of it, but how pumped would, would we be to hear them saying that they're trying to make some changes? We'd be like, fuck yeah. Like that's awesome. You know, you want to really support it. So I think once you recognize someone's pretty serious, then I think usually you'll, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll stop with your stupid jokes that you might have. But also, it, it's so funny you mentioned that, Andrew, because uh, me and my girlfriend were having a conversation about this yesterday, about like when you're doing something new or maybe something slightly unconventional that uh, most people don't find normal, there are a lot of the same people that you may have in your life that when you say you're doing this, this, or this, the immediate thing is like, oh, well, are you sure you want to do that? Or, oh, well, is that actually going to make any money? Or, is that oh, healthy? Well, is, is that, you sure that's not going to, mm, this, this, this? But, like, it's, it is very different when you, like, when there is, or I guess it's rare or a little bit more rare to come across a person like, wow, I'm pumped for you. Like, keep that up. Tell me about it. This, like, that sounds like it'll go well. Um, so when you do come across those people, cause it's inevitable that some of those people might be there on Thanksgiving, they see you not eating grandma's pecan pie and they're like, Oh, you're not gonna eat the pecan pie because you're doing the ketogenic diet. Then, you know, just, just honestly, just understand where they're coming from. They're, they're coming from a place where maybe they have some lack. Maybe they're, they're kind of jealous that you're having that type of self-control and maybe they want to see you stumble a little bit and just look at it like a challenge. Be like, nope, you're not going to see me flinch. That's okay. You, you can say that. I have, my, I have the things I'm going to be doing. You're not going to see me flinch. I'm going to make it happen. You, you can't eat all that protein in SEMA. <laughs> Watch something, me. <laughs> some, something that uh, also has helped me over the years was to um, like this is weird, but just kind of watching other people spinning their wheels, I've taken some great enjoyment in, which I probably shouldn't. But like, if I see someone fat stuff in their face, I'm like, I, I can, I'm like, I can do better than that. You know what I mean? That's that's what I, that's the way I kind of view it. That's the way I kind of think of it. And I know that we probably shouldn't be uh going down that road, but um. I found it to be like helpful in a way, you know, you see like you go to a restaurant where they give out, you know, they give you bread or whatever. Um, and you see every table kind of doing the same thing. I, I've said before, like be made of something different, you know, take good, pro take pride in yourself, take pride in taking care of yourself, uh, taking care of your, your hygiene, taking care of your body, taking care of your uh, mind, your spirit. It's kind of an all inclusive thing. And these are, these are things that kind of, there's things that need to be done and there's things that you need to avoid. And I think if you're, if you're thinking like, I don't need to be like that person. Like I'm not like that person in business. I'm not like that person in the weight room. I feel like I'm not like that person in anything that I do. And yeah, maybe it is uh, me thinking I'm better than people sometimes or something like that, but it's helped me just to kind of think, think like I, 
I want to continue to not necessarily be better than anybody else, but I want to continue to better myself. And if I'm thinking about where I want to go, then I'm thinking, well, I don't need to do what they're doing. I don't need to be like them. I don't want to walk like them, talk like them. I don't want to fucking be like those people in any way because they're, from my vantage point, it looks like they're standing still and I just want to keep moving forward. Yeah, one of, um, I'll probably repost it again, but one of our best posts that we ever did on on the Power Project um, Instagram, at Mark Bell's Power Project, uh, just basically was like, if you want to look like everybody else, work as hard as everybody else. You know, if you want to make as much money as them, work as hard as them. You know, just basically, if you want to be like everyone else, keep doing what they're doing. If you want to be you know, a little bit better or a lot better, you got you got to do more, be more. You got to do something different. You got to be made of something different. And it resonates with a lot of people because it's like, oh, fuck, you know what? That's, that's, that's true. You know, like if I go nuts on Thanksgiving, I will be just like the average person that gains 10 pounds over the holidays. Like, fuck, you just don't be that person. <laughs> yeah. No, I like as when, when people hear what you just said, Mark, there are going to be some people that are going to look at that and be like, oh, well, yeah, you, you must think you're hot shit. Blah, blah, blah. You must think you're all this. But, but the, the thing is, is like, okay, you're not when you're doing that. You're not like really looking at this person and saying, what a, just a disgusting human being piece of trash. Oh like you're gosh. not, <laughs> okay, maybe I'm trying to save you here a little bit. I'm trying to save you here a little bit. So let me do my job. <laughs> but, but, but like, yeah, no, like I do the same thing where like, I'll see something. I'll be like, uh, you kind of feel bad for that individual you you kind of do and you're just like you kind of wish that they could maybe be doing something different but you know that you're not making those decisions you're not doing those things you there's a benefit in being different from most people right so uh i i i i totally agree with that i totally agree with that i uh another way of looking at it is sometimes people are looking at you in the same way just judging you from a different perspective they're like, why doesn't Seema eat like that? He's already in great shape. Like they think you're, they think you're a lunatic. I'd hate to have his life. It seems like he's so boring. He like never even has a drink, but you feel fine without how you don't feel like you need to have a drink. Um, something that kind of, I think kind of goes along with this, what we're talking about here is, uh, this, I heard this quote the other day and I thought it was really cool. Um, your strength of your character is based off of two things. And this is just, really fascinating uh power of will to do and uh power of self-restraint to not do so how crazy is that you know you got your you got your willpower which kind of helps you do stuff and your willpower can help you not do stuff too but you also have your your power of of restraining and in this case you know you're we're talking about trying to make better food choices and so your willpower to lean towards the protein sources that are there, the vegetables, the things that will fill you up without giving you an abundance of calories um, versus also having the restraint, having that strength to really like kind of fight off uh, all these other foods that might be there. One way you can do this is, so we mentioned fasting, but you also show up to these parties full where you're already satisfied off of, off of the food that you feel is best for you uh, in, in your nutrition. So you can show up to these parties and, and you don't need to be stuffed. I mean, you, you probably still want to participate and eat with everybody else, um, at least a little bit, but I mean, you could have, you could cook a steak and some eggs on your way out the door, have something real fulfilling, maybe even have something that is like really savory. Like, um, I don't know if you like bacon or sausage or anything like that, that, that you might not even normally eat make a big omelet or something like that with avocado in it. I mean, it just will have tons of flavor. It'll just, you know, taste, it'll taste good. It'll, it'll be awesome. And it'll probably, whatever else is there. I mean, you're gonna look at a turkey after eating like an omelet like that and just be like, that's not really that appetizing or the mashed potatoes or uh, whatever the other shit is that they have at Thanksgiving. No, going into Thanksgiving, well, uh, hungry, it, it's, it, you, you are taking a little bit of a risk, especially if you're trying to, um, you know, get a handle on all this food stuff. Like you, if you know you're, you'll struggle with that a little bit, you should go in with some stuff in your stomach because then you'll be able to go in rationally. It's like when you 
shop hungry. Everyone always, the big tip is like, don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry. Because if you do that, you're going to buy all these things. And go a back. weird shit in your cart. <laughs> yeah, weird. That happens to me too. So don't do that with Thanksgiving. Yeah, dude. I Let's see. I, I bought like four boxes of Smart Pop popcorn the last time I went to the grocery store hungry. So at hey. least it's Smart Pop. But I'm like, I'm probably going to tear up all these. So I'm going to, you know. There's another popcorn brand. What What is it? it, it it's like they have different flavors like sea salt, caramel. And mm. do you, yeah, yes. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. I, I, I buy so many bags of this stuff. <laughs> uh, um, hey, it, it's actually pretty good in terms of calories. So I'm yeah. not even. I was going to say, and Seema, you, do you recommend uh, popcorn sometimes? Because popcorn can be pretty like fibrous and you can find popcorns that are like for some of your clients just to help fill up sn- with a snack. Yeah, it, like that. That's like this specific popcorn is really one of my go tos because if you like, I haven't done this in a while, but if you did eat the whole bag, <laughs> it's like 250 calories. Like it, it's wow. nothing to trip over. But like, yo, it's you got to find us the name of big, that stuff. It's a big bag, yo. Like it's 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 a substantial bag of popcorn, and it tastes great. So and it's like, already pre popped popcorn. It's pre popped. It's okay. pre popped popcorn. Yeah, you don't have to pop it. Um, oh God, but it's so good. I don't yeah, know they have guys, different flavors uh, and stuff. I don't know if you guys are into Jello at all, but uh, I made up now. a big thing of Jello yesterday, sugar-free Jello. Hmm. I ate this like giant bowl of it, and it was like <laughs> ten calories or something. Yeah. It's really nothing, and and Jello has um you know has gelatin in it. Gelatin is supposed to be good for your skin and connective tissue and stuff like that, but it also has a lot of glycine in it, which is the main uh, thing that's in collagen. So. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could just buy the store, you know, regular store bought ones too. Um, I just happened to make one because I was, uh, you know, Whole Foods. They have like weird stuff there, so <laughs> they didn't didn't have like the the pre made ones there. So <laughs> I had to get one that I had to uh, make myself. But it was awesome. I threw some whipped cream on there and had a party. Oh yeah, Never Jello with Jello. whipped cream is really good. I'll I'll throw um, a little bit of the Jello in with like my like ice cream shakes that I make. And that just helps gets it gets it more mm. voluminous. And so that I mean, if you guys haven't messed with an anabolic ice cream thing, that's something that you can have before going into uh, you know Thanksgiving because it's it'll fill up the entire Ninja Bullet or Bullet Ninja Blender, mm-hmm. and it's it's delicious. Like it's it's dude, how fucking loud is a Ninja Blender? <laughs> fucking loud! It is so loud, dude. Can they put it in like a fucking chamber or something? I, I mean, but I think. Ah! That's- it goes crazy. I think that's why it's such a savage, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like blend blend tech blenders have you see you can see them smoking when they're trying to make uh, the the same recipe the for this for this shake or this as ice cream. But yeah, the blender is like the the ninja is nin- yeah. It it's so damn loud. It goes. Wait, wrong. is it is it only like eighty bucks? Uh, yeah, so they're expensive. A, yeah, but don't don't buy that one. I got a better deal for you. <laughs> there's one for a hundred dollars right now, and it comes with like two different. Uh, it comes with a big whatever bucket, and then it comes with a small one that you can use as like a food processor, and then of course all kinds of cups and stuff. Mm. Yeah, it, it's dude, it's it's amazing. <laughs> Vitamix is pretty cool, but it's like overkill. You know, it's right. like that, like that can turn like whatever you're blending into like soup. Because mm-hmm. you can get it so hot, I think maybe the ninja can do that too. But that's really weird. Yeah, yeah Vitamixes are like four hundred bucks. My mom used to have one. Yeah, they're. Uh, she, I think she still does. And wait, actually, let me ask you real quick. Uh, we're going too deep into this, but the, does the ninja is does it get rid of the fiber or does it does it stay in there? Because you know how some of these blenders that spits out fiber. I think that. Yeah, no, yeah. Just, so anytime you take like uh, oranges or something like that, and you were to blend them up. Um, it will break down the the food so much, you know, it will liquefy it and it will get rid of uh, some of the fiber. I think a Ninja Blender would do that, but like you can just hit the button a couple times if you wanted to leave like a little bit of pulp in there or something, you could and it would still have, uh, it would still have some fiber. But I make shakes all the time and I do some like, I don't know, I do some unconventional stuff. Like I'll, I'll mix like protein powder um, sometimes with like a little bit of milk or cream. Um, but also with uh, uh, yogurt, like plain yogurt. And sometimes I'll even throw in, which sounds disgusting, but doesn't really alter the flavor much. I'll throw some like cottage cheese in there because it has casein in it. Um, 
protein shakes that have casein in them, they don't taste as good as whey protein, I don't think. So I usually just try to have like, you know, people say like, oh, if you have cottage cheese, cottage cheese or casein at night, um, I don't know, you have better nitrogen retention or whatever. So mm-hmm. I do shit like that. I do stuff to try to just make my protein shake not a regular shake that I just use just water with and just shake in my shaker cup if I'm at home. Mm-hmm. And so those are, those are like some little things I'll do to kind of modify the, the shake. I think it lasts longer. It fills me up a little bit better and uh, works really well. Yeah. So like the juicers, those completely get rid of the fiber, right? Yeah. They'll pretty much uh, annihilate it. Yeah. yeah no, they'll all they're... get rid of your fiber pretty much. Anything that's going to, it's like, um, it's like chewing it for you basically, you know? Mm, gotcha. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't know a, a, a regular blender would actually do that. So damn, that's news to me. Um, what about uh, post Thanksgiving? Kind of like, uh, we won't say anybody got off track or anything, but how can somebody kind of hit the ground running after Thanksgiving to just make sure that they're still going to like, you know, they have a goal by, you know, January, February, and how can they still make sure that they're going to hit it if they, you know, either did have a little something, something, you know, something extra that they prepped for. They did a little more cardio. They fasted. They ate before they got to Thanksgiving, but they got there and they still had, you know, grandma's pecan pie because you just can't say no to it. <laughs> could you know a couple a couple of days after you could um you can kind of recover from it by just eating a little bit less if you're somebody that tracks maybe you uh chop out a certain amount of calories for a week or two but what i would suggest is that you don't like don't chop out a thousand calories a day you know chop out like 200 a day and try that for two weeks or something you know especially if you haven't been tracking before or something like that um, the other thing is to always stay on top of those walks. You know, you can, you have an opportunity to like kind of walk right through this shit. <laughs> like literally, you know, if you keep, if you keep walking and keep moving, you know, walking doesn't burn a ton of calories, but it's, it doesn't cost you anything to recover from it. If you're, unless you're in a uh, really bad condition. Um, and so therefore you can walk fre- frequently and you can walk for long durations. So staying on your walks, like I would just, you know, walk you know, right through the, the holidays. And if you have a day off or something and you can get out and walk more than normal, um, I think that would be preferable. Never us, un- underestimate the power of lifting. Uh, lifting weights is huge. And I would lift through it too because the lifting is going to help you um, regulate your blood sugar and uh, hold on to your muscle mass. And all these things are really important. So if you, if you, if Thanksgiving hits and you take a, take some time off, and then you fall into a rut. And then during Thanksgiving, you ate a lot of calories. It kind of got your sweet tooth to awaken again. You know, maybe you gained two pounds or something. But now maybe you're having a hard time getting back in the gym. And you start to lose a little bit of muscle mass, start to atrophy a little bit. You still have that sweet tooth. You're still eating extra calories. I mean, you you see what's happening here. You know, you're really heading uh, heading in a different direction. So to really answer the question... You might want to try to set, you know, a specific goal to try to do something at a specific time or just always try to keep your weight in some sort of reasonable number. You weigh 180 pounds, you weigh 230 pounds, whatever your body weight is. I would say going into the holiday, I would say just tell yourself, hey, I'm not going to weigh more than that. I, you know, I can, I can eat whatever I want, but I'm not going to weigh more than that. And then when the time comes, when it's after the holiday, if you did go past that a little bit, you can say, okay, well, I'll just get back. I'll get my body weight back to where it was, which shouldn't take any time because uh, we're talking about a really short period of time that you may have been uh, messing up a bit. And also, I mean, with everything that we've mentioned during this episode, uh, if you just do those things, like make like even the the day before Thanksgiving, maybe uh, just have a plan for the food you're going to eat that morning. I, th- and I know we mentioned like, yeah, you know, make an omelet or whatever, but figure out what that food that you're going to eat on the morning of Thanksgiving is. If you do that, figure out what that is the day before so that when that day comes, you're, you're fully prepared. If you do these things, you know, like you're not going to be, you're not going to, you're not going to suffer on Thanksgiving and you're not going to suffer after. So just prep yourself. Yo. Yeah. Have, have the old plan. And again, tell someone, tell someone in your household, 
that that's that's going to be the plan so that way they can also hold you accountable um and then if you guys have more on that stuff please uh go ahead and uh cut me off and just start blabbing about it but i just wanted to switch gears real quick because i was just notified that the bicep board is officially available oh my god yeah mark can you explain a little bit and you know i'm actually going to share my screen because i'm Mm -hmm. learning how to do that shit yeah the bicep board is um it kind of looks like your laptop and you can look at that guy's jacked oh so jacked who is that dude what was i saying that guy's steroids wow look Look at that he's got some junk in the trunk too look at that oh yeah Hmm. a little thickness wow Wow. What thing. you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk inside your trunk. <laughs> <laughs> What's next there? I'm gonna make 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 you. <laughs> I'm gonna get get you drunk. Get you drunk. Off. I can't even concentrate. Can, can you zo- can we zoom in? Can we? I don't know. Can we? Do we have a 360? Oh, no. Damn. Oh look, I can grab mm, his nipples. Mm, mm. Grabbing. Oh yeah, you literally are grabbing the the nipple. Wow. Nice. Making me making me hungry. Uh, anyway, yeah, so the bicep board it kind of uh, looks like a tray, and uh, you can put a dumbbell in this uh, tray type thing, and um, it's really durable, made of this highly durable plastic. It has a little gateway that will lock the dumbbell in there so you don't drop the dumbbell on your little footsies. Um, and then from there, you're, you're lifting like a tray instead of lifting a dumbbell. You're not grabbing onto anything. And it feels really strange at first. At first, it, 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 when I first used it, I was kind of annoyed. I was like, what do I grab onto? Mm. <laughs> and uh, the guy that invented it, <clears throat> this guy, Pete, he was like, um, he's like, that's the whole thing is you don't grab onto anything. Your, your hand is just flat and you're not squeezing with the forearm at all. So it takes the forearms out of the equation. And for me, right, sorry about that. I think we had some technical difficulties going on there. I think uh, Andrew uh, had to take a poop and then all hell broke loose. Anyway, we were talking about the bicep board and uh, you know, I'm someone that's torn my bicep a couple times. I've always had a hard time uh, really like getting the mind muscle connection going with the, with the uh, bicep. And so the bicep board has helped a lot. The bicep board is exactly what it sounds like. It's a board to work your biceps. There's like a little chamber that you stick a dumbbell into. And when you put the dumbbell in there, there's a little bit of a latch and the latch will lock it in there. So you don't drop the dumbbell onto your feet. And, um, it's something I really like a lot. I like the way that it gives me, gives me a pump really quickly. You end up using a lot less weight. So if you're a stronger individual, uh, I kind of like top weight that you probably would use with this. It's just one 50 pound dumbbell. Normally you might have fifties in each hand. Uh, but in this case, you're just using like, I, a lot of times I'm using like about 35 pounds really helps me to kind of squeeze and, um, get a really good pump in the biceps and helps train that peak that everyone is, uh, always trying to get after. It is different. It's a little bit strange at first cause you're not mm-hmm. holding on to anything, but that's the genius of it is that you're not squeezing or holding on to anything. So it takes the hand out of the equation, takes the forearm out of the equation. It's all biceps. Yeah. And it's funny whenever you see like my first reaction after I did the, like the first rep, it's like the same ooh face. <laughs> like you feel that peak, like you haven't felt it before. Like, you can't compare concentration curls or cable curls to it. You just feel massive activation of your bicep peak. And after I've seen a bunch of other people use it for the first time, it's always the same exact reaction. So if you want, if you guys want to get your biceps going, you, you, you got to try this thing out. Bicep board is also great for triceps. There's an attachment that we sell with it. Um, so you can do tricep pushdowns with it. You can also do some pullovers for your lats. It feels amazing. I know that you guys are going to dig it. We've never sold anybody else's product here at markbellslingshot.com. Everything has been uh, some sort of creation that's come out of my fat head and uh, has come in from my years of experience. But in this case, uh, we found a great product that we wanted to present to you guys. So super excited. It's available now at markbellslingshot.com. And we also have 30% off the entire site along with free worldwide shipping. So take advantage of that. Get yourselves ready. I know that uh, 2020 uh, was uh, was different and a lot of gyms were shut down. But um, I think uh, you, can, you can take your fitness into your own hands and you can grab yourself a hip circle, a slingshot. You can get some of the products that we have. You can still train your ass off at home. And uh, hopefully we can make 
2021 a uh, much more productive year than 2020 was. Yep, yep, yep. Um, before we end, do you want to recap real quick the things we went on in terms of Thanksgiving, like just the short bullet points? Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. we talked a lot about, you know, basically how to avoid uh, the onslaught of, of gaining too much weight around the holidays. Um, years ago, I started up something that I call Operation Get Less Fatterist. You can check that out on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. Um, I've shot a bunch of videos on my YouTube, so you can check some of those things out. Uh, that's uh, just Mark Smelly Bell. It's a YouTube channel. Um, but basically today, we, we talked a lot about a couple different strategies that you can utilize so that you can uh, you know, still stay in shape and, and not have the holidays uh, crush you, but you can still enjoy the holidays. So Number one is you can utilize some intermittent fasting. Basically, just have a day where you're just uh, just a liquid fast of coffee, water, those kinds of things. And then whenever you ha have your normal Thanksgiving uh, dinner, you can eat whatever you want within reason. And uh, that's your calories for the day is that one meal. Uh, just remember that it's easy to go overboard. So, uh, you know take your time with it and be a little cautious. We did also suggest that you eat your protein first, maybe protein vegetables go first. And then uh, maybe it's whatever you want after that. So that way you kind of fill yourself up a little bit uh, before you start to indulge on whatever your favorite Thanksgiving foods are. The other thing was, is uh, you can go into these situations full off of the nutrition that you believe in and you can cook your meals at home. You can have a meal or two uh, during the day and, certainly before you uh, head out to whosoever house you're going to for the day. Um, you know, we love that Piedmontese beef. So that's, yeah. that's probably what I'll be doing because I have a tendency to kind of pick through the food that's just like sitting out before everyone gets over the house and I'm eating cheese and salami and all this stuff and probably eating a, a thousand calories or more of that stuff uh, while I'm waiting to eat more, which mm -hmm. doesn't really make any sense if you think about it. So Stay on top of it, you know, stay on top of those walks. Uh, if you have an opportunity to lift, get some lifting in. Lifting is always beneficial, but uh, enjoy your holidays. Have a lot of fun and do so uh, responsibly. And then Andrew, who isn't here right now, had the great point of having a Thanksgiving accountability partner. That was a really, that was a really smart one. So if those of you are going to Thanksgiving with a, you know, a family member or wife, husband, whatever, you know, tell them, hey, I'm trying to do this. Help keep me accountable. And you guys can work with each other. It'll, that'll make a big difference. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, you want to take us on out of here, Ensema? Oh, yeah. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, I am at Ensema Inyang on Instagram and YouTube and Clubhouse. Mark? I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. If you love this video, please share it out with other people. It might help them work their way through the holidays and stay jacked and tan. Catch you guys later.